involving a truck and a van carrying disabled passengers. Look who's watching. A controversial security system is keeping a close eye on subway riders. And amazing pictures from the West Coast. A landslide brings down more than a dozen million dollar homes. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Rosenfield. I'm Roz Abrams, and I just want to begin this broadcast by saying welcome, Jim. Thank you, Roz. We are so glad to have you back from that other channel. And needless to say, I look forward to working with you for a long, long, long time. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled to be back here at CBS, Roz, and I'm thrilled to be working with you. Oh, I love it Such when you a talk professional. Like that. Well, you'll see. We'll have more time to talk okay. later on in this broadcast. Lots of news today. Let's have at it. Has been busy. We begin with tragedy on the roads in northern New Jersey. Crews are still cleaning up from debris from a deadly crash involving a truck and a van carrying disabled passengers. This happened this morning in Hawthorne, and that's where CBS 2's Jay Dow joins us live. Jay? Jim, take a look at this minivan over here sitting on the flatbed truck. You get an indication of how severe this accident was. And as crews continue to clear Ray Avenue here in Hawthorne, the company that owns the truck at the center of the accident is assisting in that effort. The big question this evening, how did the driver lose control of his rig? Eyewitnesses say the driver of this dump truck must have known something was wrong, but could not do anything about it as he barreled out of control down Ray Avenue at about 10 o'clock this morning. I don't stop. He's still going. The initial investigation seems to suggest that he may have been suffering brake problems or brake failure. Uh, everybody seems to say that he, he was uh, pulling on the air horn. The timing could not have been any worse. As the truck crossed bustling Goffle Road, it plowed into a van carrying seven people, five of them developmentally disabled residents and two employees of the private nonprofit Eastern Christian Children's Retreat in Wyckoff. The van, which was taking the residents to a day activity in nearby Prospect Park, then crashed into a minivan with just a driver inside, pinning it against a utility pole. It came in a rescue truck and uh I just started helping taking victims out of the car, you know, with the Maverick tool and just counting up, and it was a mess. The dump truck, which had just left a job in Oakland, landed on its side, spilling dirt and chunks of pavement on the street. In all, eight people were injured and taken to area hospitals, but one of the retreat van's passengers did not make it. In the 32 years we've been open, nothing like this has ever happened to us, so it's... Uh... Wrong place at the wrong time, I guess, and we're just trying to, to cope with it. Prosecutors say state police investigators will inspect the dump truck, which is owned by Hackensack-based A. Machione Brothers Construction. Joe Machione told us, quote, my condolences go out to whoever was hurt by this. I just don't know what happened. As the families and friends of the injured and deceased at the family at the children's re retreat deal with this crash it would seem that investigators have most of the evidence that they need there are skid marks up ray avenue and as you could see a moment ago they are taking that dump truck off the scene to inspect it very closely we're live in hawthorne jay dow cbs 2 news jim back to you thanks jay we have breaking news right now into cbs a shooting in the bushwick section of brooklyn joe beerman's in chopper two with the latest joe hello jim this is uh, on evergreen right by covert the sign says it's the Tiger Playground. Now, police are telling us uh, shots were fired about 20 minutes ago inside the playground here. When they arrived, they said they found one male shot in the back. No word on the shooter. That injured person has been taken to Kings County Hospital. And right now, police detectives and uh, units from the uh, precinct are trying to collect the information on exactly what happened here at the Tiger Playground. No age on the victim is available yet from the EMS, but we'll keep you updated. Live from Bushwick, back to the studio. Thank you, Joe. Security cameras are now mounted on some subway platforms in Brooklyn. The idea is to catch criminals and prevent crime in the same place. A great goal, but some say wrong method. CBS 2's John Slattery is here with more. John. Roz, some say it's increasingly Big Brother. The NYPD hopes to install 400 cameras on city streets to battle crime and terrorism. Yet the Transit Authority has already given its blessing to cameras that were recently installed on three transit lines in Brooklyn. At the 50th Street station in Brooklyn, new security cameras are installed inside the station and cameras trained on the stairways to the platforms. Ten cameras at this station, as many as 18 at others in the borough. 
Assemblyman Dove Hyken used money from his state budget to foot the bill, equipping nine stations on the D, F, and N lines. These nine stations send a message to the bad guy. When you enter this station, everyone who enters this station is recorded. Hyken spent $1.2 million to install 120 cameras. Proponents are already hailing the value of such surveillance, saying one lawbreaker has already been caught. A woman was assaulted outside in the street. The perpetrator went into the train station a couple of blocks down. With the man's picture recorded, police made an arrest in two days. Officials say the video images will be retained for between 7 and 30 days. Transit Authority President Lawrence Reuter was on hand to voice his support, and some writers we spoke with applauded the new security move. A very good idea, yes. I feel more secure if they have camera. But the New York Civil Liberties Union is concerned over what it calls a surveillance society. We don't believe it should be at our complete expense of privacy. And we don't think that most New Yorkers want to end up on NYPD tape every time they're out walking the streets or using the subway. The cameras present a dilemma for some. On one hand, pictures may help police solve certain crimes, but critics are worried that images gathered by police might become part of a database on individuals who are not char charged with any crime at all. Roz, Jim. John Slattery, thank you. The debate is on tonight over whether former FBI official Mark Felt is a hero or a villain. Some say Felt should not have come forward as the secret source called Deep Throat, whose inside information on Watergate forced President Richard Nixon to resign. CBS 2's Lou Young is here with more. Lou. Roz, Jim, governments like their secrets. Some are necessary, others merely convenient. When the secrets are illegal, though, does a whistleblower have the right to go outside the system? That's what Mark Felt did, much to the horror of Nixon apologists who reacted today. So Mark Felt reveals himself as the primary source for the Watergate story, and many of those who played defense for Richard Nixon and lost big back then cannot bring themselves to join the chorus of praise for the former FBI official. Even President Bush was equivocal when asked about it today. He was, uh, it's hard for me to judge, I'm learning more about the situation. It was a burglary of Democratic headquarters leading up to the 1972 election, and the trail of hush money led all the way back to the White House itself. One of the unrepentant burglars is Bernard Barker, a former CIA operative doing cloak and dagger work for Nixon's re-election campaign. He says Deep Throat should have kept his mouth shut. The man has no honor. Uh, I think he is a crumb. And I think that um, I don't see how he can live with himself. I've never done anything dishonorable in my life, and I would do everything that I did, I would do exactly the same all over again. Former White House counsel Charles Coulson also did time for the cover-up. He says Felt should have gone through channels. But journalist John O'Connor insists Felt was trapped by the size and extent of the criminal conspiracy. They had to go around the power structure that was doing the obstruction. There was some hush money being paid out of Mexico. Right. Uh, one. Which, of the, which the FBI wanted to investigate, which the White House said, no, keep your hands off of that. There's a CIA operation down there. It's too sensitive. That was the obstruction for which President Nixon actually resigned. Bottom line, it was the story, the truth, that eroded Richard Nixon's credibility and forced him to resign. The reporters who broke the story, Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, recently donated their notes and papers on the case to the University of Texas in Austin. Now we have a face for the source that led them to so many of the facts. Felt insists he never intended to bring down the president, but simply wanted to thwart a cover-up of a crime. For more than 30 years, he kept the secret partly out of shame. His family convinced him to go public. Jim, Ross? Lou, some people have raised questions about Felt's ulterior motives. He what was, might they have been? He was passed over for directorship. J. Edgar Hoover died uh, only a month before Watergate, and some suggest that he was uh, having his revenge on Nixon. Curiously, he was convicted of authorizing illegal break-ins uh, in other investigations. Ronald Reagan pardoned him in 1981. Richard Nixon sent him a congratulation note and a bottle of champagne. Wow. Okay. Lou Young, thank you. In Southern California, an early morning landslide sent million-dollar homes crashing down a hill and forced the evacuation of close to 1,000 people. It happened in Laguna Beach, which is about 50 miles southeast of Los Angeles. That's where CBS reporter Laura McLaughlin is live with the latest. Laura. 
Well, Roz, at this hour, the homes are continuing to slide, albeit very slow. As you might imagine, folks are still on edge here. Over 1,000 folks have been evacuated. 500 homes in jeopardy still at this hour. We can tell you that although the folks this morning weren't sure what was happening here in this neck of the woods, they were almost certain it was an earthquake. Loose dirt on muddy hillsides sent million-dollar houses crashing down the slopes, leaving a trail of destruction. The ground's still moving. Uh, trees are snapping. Uh, we have some gas leaks. Uh, we have some unaccounted water. At least 18 Laguna Beach homes are lost, and many more are still in danger. A few residents were treated for minor injuries, but authorities say quick action by evacuation teams most likely prevented a loss of life. We evacuated 500 homes, over 1,000 people at this point. Some of the buildings fell nearly intact, while others crumbled as they moved. Foundations buckled, and retaining walls turned into rubble as the ground started to shift. At the peak of the hills, houses that didn't fall saw patios and decks give way. Down below, homes that absorbed the impact of the falling building suffered serious damage. He's like, you're going to have to get airlifted out of here if you don't leave right now. The steep hills of Southern California's coast have a history of causing trouble for homeowners. In February, the Golden State suffered one of the rainiest seasons ever on record, leading to mudslides that claimed lives and property. Several homes were labeled with a red tag in this neighborhood, marking them uninhabitable. Look at that. Geologists are surveying the scene, but now that the earth has moved once again, even if residents can rebuild, the cost both financial and emotional will be great. Over a thousand people have been evacuated and dozens of homes still hang in jeopardy. The mayor of Laguna Beach has now asked that this area be declared a disaster. In Laguna Beach, California, Laura McLaughlin, CBS 2 News. Thank you. In tonight's Health Watch, a new way to treat a common and often painful condition that affects millions of people. Dr. David Mark shows us the medical breakthrough. And with the jury about to get the Michael Jackson case, find out about the ruling that could keep him out of jail. We're going to see how a seriously injured firefighter helped fulfill a prophecy made months ago by his wife. And I'm meteorologist John Belaris. It was a nice day today. It was dry, a little bit cooler. Some rain waiting in the wings. Will it spoil your upcoming weekend? You'll find out in just a few moments. Closed caption is brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving you forward. On the wrong side of the law, coming up at 6, a veteran Long Island detective arrested. How he allegedly turned an undercover assignment into an incredible scam. Plus, the test scores are in, why city students and teachers are cheering. Next on CBS 2 News at 6. Jim Rosenfield moderates a live debate. The Republican candidates for New Jersey governor. Brought to you by CBS 2 and the New York Times. Sunday morning at 11. Gesundheit. We're sorry you've got allergies. Maybe we can help. Medical studies prove Benadryl is more effective than the leading allergy medicine. Histamine blocking Benadryl is more effective at relieving allergy symptoms like runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, and watery eyes. When allergies bloom, Benadryl is more effective than the leading allergy medicine. Not again. Right call 1-800-905-GEEK. A geek zone call certified technician will come to you and get the job done right. For on-site computer service, make the right call 1-800-905-GEEK. Furniture Factory Outlet has just called in train loads of fantastic new products from all over the world. And wonderful low, low, low prices. You can buy seven-piece packages at 388, 398, 448, and 498. FFO has died at for only 98 bucks. Bedroom sets only 198 bucks. Bug beds as low as $118. And even twin mattress sets for only 36 bucks. All aboard for the FFO savings train. Furniture Factory Outlet has same-day delivery and layaway and financing is available. The prices are low at FFO. Brian Walker gets in early to tutor kids. Greer Hansen sticks around after school to give extra help. 
Roberta Hairston stays up late grading papers. They're teachers, and while they have a lot to be proud of, they've worked two years without a contract, making 15% less than suburban teachers. Mr. Mayor, our city has a record $3 billion surplus, so isn't it time our teachers were paid fairly? New York's teachers deserve a fair contract. They earn it every day. A Manhattan jury has convicted the man seen on this surveillance tape of brutalizing a 13-year-old Bellevue Hospital patient. Hector Ramirez was found guilty of kidnapping the girl from her hospital room, sexually attacking her in a conference room, and then beating her. His fingerprint was found in the girl's room. The attack took place in April of 2004. Ramirez faces 25 years to life in prison when he is sentenced later this month. It's been a big day for the men and women who watch over New York City. The New York City Fire Department honored its heroes. Our Michael Pomerantz has more on the FDNY's Medal Day 2005. Hundreds of New York City's bravest honored the bravest among them. And six of those come from Queens Ladder Company 138 for their heroic work at this Jackson Heights fire last December that killed two and injured 15. It's no surprise that last year the city experienced the fewest number of civilian deaths since 1919. For his efforts at the Jackson Heights Fire, Ladder 138's Victor Rosa Jr. was awarded the department's top honor, the James Gordon Bennett Medal, for climbing to the floor above the fire without the protection of a hose line and risking his own life to rescue three people, including a four-year-old. He has a four-year-old uh, uh, son or daughter, and picking up the, ch the victim made him think of that child. Firefighter Rosa is among 38 individuals recognized for going above and beyond the call of duty. One of those honored today was firefighter Jeffrey Cool. He received the medal for a roof rope rescue back in June of 2004. But it's what happened seven months after that that stays with firefighter Cool every day. Cool, now steadied by a cane after months of rehab, will likely always remember that day in January when his company, Rescue 3 in the Bronx, which he'd only been with since 2001, raced to an apartment fire. When the flames became overwhelming, Cool and three other firefighters jumped from a fourth floor window. Lieutenants Curtis Mayron and John Ballou did not survive. Cool, critically injured, was rushed to the hospital where his anxious but strong family tried to remain positive. Cool was reminded of that today. One of the first things his wife said to me in the emergency room was, we're going to medal day. <laughs> so uh, I, I told him that this morning, we're here, thank God. Brothers in bravery at the city's 136th medal day ceremony, honoring the men and women who run into harm's way, the members of the FDNY. Michael Pomeranz, CBS 2 News. And we have breaking news into the CBS 2 newsroom. A child has been hit by a bus. Joe Behrman live over the scene in the Bedford Park section of the Bronx. Joe. Well, Roz, this took place, police say, around 3.30. Apparently, a little two-year-old girl ducked out in between two automobiles here on the uh, southbound side of the Grand Concourse right before 196th Street. That BX-1 bus struck the two-year-old little girl. Now, she was raced to St. Barnabas Hospital. Hospital spokesman tell, tell us the little girl is listed in critical condition. At this point, a major police investigation is underway here southbound on the Grand Concourse at 196th Street. We'll keep you updated. Back to the studio. Thank you, Joe. Still ahead tonight, it is one of the hottest selling cars on the market, but is there a hidden problem with it? See why even the government's getting involved in this one. A hot selling book comes to the big screen. Here with the cast of The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants tells us <laughs> next. How long does it take to get hooked on the newest CSI? About a New York Minute tonight. We have a serial dumping bodies all over the city. See how it all began with the first episode. Don't do it! CSI New York, CBS Tonight. Then, caution for wine lovers. Tonight at 11, CBS 2 uncorks a new trend in wines that could take you by surprise. See why some are sounding the alarm and what you need to know about extreme wines. Now, Jim Rosenpeel joins Roz Abrams on CBS 2 News at 11 tonight. Marvin Windows and Doors. The experienced salespeople at Nassau Door and Window will provide you with the best products for your project. Discover why we set the standard for reliable service. For more information on Marvin Windows and Doors, visit Nassau Door and Window. Mark, what did I tell you about skateboarding in the house? 
Ah. Report card. This moment brought to you by Sylvan Learning Center. We identify your child's unique needs, followed by individual attention, with flexible hours and progress reports. His teacher recommended Sylvan, and what a difference. Get a free video or DVD and see for yourself how Sylvan can make all the difference. Call 1-800-EDUCATE-NOW. My vacuum is purple. They say it doesn't lose suction. My vacuum makes me look good. My vacuum was in a fashion magazine. My vacuum's a wind tunnel, and it cleans better than Dyson. The self-propelled wind tunnel by Hoover cleans carpet 56% better than Dyson. It's proven by the only recognized test representing real-life conditions in American homes. After all, do you want people to look at your vacuum or your clean home? Wind tunnel technology by Hoover. Clean to the highest power. Isn't it about time someone took an axe to New Jersey's state budget? I'm Steve Lonigan. As mayor, I froze spending, cut debt, and kept taxes below inflation. As governor, I'll do the same. Fight for small businesses and suburban taxpayers. By cutting state spending, reducing taxes and regulations, and protecting home rule. My opponents think Trenton can solve our problems. They're wrong. Trenton is the problem, not the solution. Steve Lonigan for governor. It's time for a change. Time for a conservative change. The federal government has opened an investigation into the hot-selling hybrid Toyota Prius. This after reports of the engine stalling without warning. CBS 2's Kirsten Cole has the story in your two cents. A pricey car that has become the darling of environmentalists and anyone looking to save money on commuting costs. The Toyota Prius frequently has a waiting list that stretches to a year. But now the government has opened an investigation into dozens of complaints that the car is leaving drivers stranded. The growing hybrid market is dominated by Toyota, which has nearly 400,000 gas and electric combination vehicles on the road. The fast-selling Prius is the jewel in their crown. But now 75,000 of its 2004 and 2005 model years are being scrutinized by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for suddenly stalling at high speeds. It's a very terrifying feeling. Phil Leinert has seen the problem documented at Edmunds.com and knows how popular this car is. The customer love of the Prius can be quantified by the fact that people are willing to pay more money for a slightly used Prius than a brand new one, just so they don't have to stay on the waiting list. But lately, more drivers are having problems getting off the highway safely. 33 complaints have been documented on NHTSA's website. Drivers saying, I was scared. This could have resulted in a serious accident. I am concerned that this will happen again and that there will be an accident next time. At the moment, nobody really seems to understand exactly what is causing this difficulty. NHTSA's investigation noted the engine shut down suddenly, without warning, while most drivers were doing between 35 and 65 miles an hour when it happened. Toyota responded today saying, this is not a recall. Toyota is currently cooperating fully with the agency to investigate the allegations. Toyota will provide complete results of its investigation to NHTSA within the agency's required time frame. Further tarnishing the Prius image is new research by Edmunds.com that the hybrid doesn't live up to its mileage hype and that unless drivers are putting 37,000 miles a year on the car, they'll actually be spending more to own this fuel-efficient vehicle. I'm Kirsten Cole, CBS 2 News. 521, let's find out what's coming up on CBS 2 News at 6. Maurice Dubois joins us from the newsroom. Maurice. All right, thanks you two. Straight ahead at 6 tonight, the battle over the West Side Stadium taking another wild turn with the new 11th hour plan from Albany. We'll show you who's behind it at 6 o'clock. And how an undercover cop used his training to allegedly scam tens of thousands of dollars. Plus, caught on tape, see a robber caught in the act in a Wall Street building. I'll see you at 6. Roz, and uh, who's that guy sitting next to you? Hey, I know you. This handsome <laughs> devil is James. Do you Welcome know him from to the party, yeah. Jim. Thanks, Maurice. Good seeing you. What do you think so far? I think it's great. It's great to be back. Got great to be back team. with you. Mm -hmm. We used to work, you know, at that other place. Remember, it's <laughs> CBS 2, Jim. I'm trying. Whatever you do, I'm trying, Maurice. <laughs> And keep an eye guys. on our lives next to you, Hello, too. Hello, yes. Really? Good advice, Maurice. Okay. Yeah. But I'm being good today. Uh, you got it. Yeah. Welcome, Jim. Thanks, Maurice. You bet. It's great to be and here. And the welcomes just continue. Everybody, we can have a four shot yeah, here. John's four here. Katie's right here. Up. There you go. Gang, you say hi. hi. Well, I want to welcome you. Thank you, John. And I got a Is it true you came in on your day off? To, yes. to be here. That's huge. I appreciate that. Vacation. Wow. Came in. You know. Trust me. Somehow coming from him, that is huge. That's big. Yes, it is. I have another question. Yeah. Yes. Can I call you? I kind of asked you a little bit outside of the oh, news. I know it's Jimmy. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Roz, Roz speaks. Broad. No, no. Let, call you Let him have no. one day on his own no. here. Yes, it's no. Who <laughs> is your mother and right. who else calls Mom, Jimmy? Mom, my wife. Yes. And uh, actually, my agent. Okay. All right. Those are the only three. And That's all. Man. But nope. you know, if you, right. if you feel you must, if Roz is not comfortable with it, we no, can, you can call me that off the air. Okay. All right. Katie, you want to say hi? I do, Jim. It's very okay. nice to have you here. Welcome so aboard. Much. We hope Thanks. we're not frightening you yet. We're very happy to have you here. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of used to this whole <laughs> I had a feeling. Thing. Yeah. Free flowing fun I'm glad fun to be thing. here. Yeah. It is fun. And uh, can I call you Johnny? Johnny. You can call me Johnny. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here we it's, go. It's a warm, affectionate term. <laughs> okay. Rozzy? Uh, yeah, you can call me Rozzy. Jimmy? Got any weather? I got some weather. Let's Thank check you. it out and see what we have out there right now. It's sunny. Oh, oh nice. and we're going to check out Joey <laughs> up in Chopper Tui. Oh. Let's go to Joe. All right, let's see what's going on up there. Isn't hey, Joe. It, isn't it such a love fest? Don't we all just <laughs> yeah. love each other? <laughs> <laughs> I feel <laughs> you said it. <laughs> we're uh, out in Queens. One of the things we wanted to show you, depends on where you are, you may see a lot of ground fog. If you're on, like, the Belt Parkway, uh, down towards the south shore of Brooklyn, that's where we're looking down now. You'll see all that ground fog coming off. There was also a lot down by the Verrazano, too. You got it. Thank you very much. We got the fog in the forecast for tonight. High today with six days, a little bit cooler ocean breeze now. That's why the low clouds and fog moving back in for the nighttime hours. 75 is a normal high, record high, 96 cooler than yesterday. Yesterday, well up into the 70s. Today, winds in off the ocean, keeping us cooler from the city points, East Jersey Shore, Long Island, quite a bit cooler today. Central Park right now, 65 degrees across the island. Look at that. East winds, all the difference. Temperatures in the middle 50s with that fog bank beginning to move in. Visible satellite from this morning, that is the fog. It burned away during the day today. Now it's coming back in through the south shore. We'll spread across the region tonight. So patches of ground fog developing once again. Early fog for Thursday, then sunshine. A day like today, 70 flushing by the bay. Mets. 710, some clouds dry, could be a little patchy fog. Forecast for tonight, low clouds and fog developing temperatures, mainly in the 50s. Cool spot will be the east end, Riverhead 48. And then tomorrow, early fog, then sunshine throughout. Temperatures in the mid-60s to the mid-70s. I'll be back with complete five-day and a look into your upcoming weekend in just a little bit. Roz and Jimmy. <laughs> That's the last time he's going to call me that. That's the last time. Nice, <laughs> a new flick aimed at tweens and teens hits theaters today. Katie spoke to the cast of The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Love that title, and she's here with more. Kate. That's quite a title, right? You may have heard of the book, and there is a reason. This film is based on the best-selling novel by Anne Brashares. Sisterhood is the story of one summer vacation and four lifelong friends. Ta-da! In the sisterhood of the traveling pants, one special pair of jeans helps to strengthen a special bond between girlfriends. The four, who have been buddies since they were born, will be spending their first summer apart. As a way of keeping in touch while each is away, they agree to form a sisterhood. Rule number one, um, each sister is going to keep the pants for... A week. A week. First, it's to Greece with Lena, played by Alexis Bledel. Then on to North Carolina with Carmen, America Ferreira, who's visiting her dad. Bridget, Blake Lively, gets them at soccer camp in Mexico, and Amber Tamblin, Tibby, who is stuck at home in Maryland. While it may sound like a chick flick, Tamblin tells me this is much more. I think that this film, it's important to say, absolutely transcends genders and ages. The storylines are about um, uh, cultural diversity, about sexuality, about family, about um, uh, life and death, and you know the struggle between the two. Rhythm. I'll make you brave. Each girl is faced with her own challenges over the course of this summer. Blake Lively says this film sums up what friendship is all about. They know each other so well inside out, and they just love each other with all their heart. They know you better than you know yourself. Lively makes her big screen debut in the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants, and she says it's been the experience of a lifetime. It was so great. I can't even believe I'm here right now. I, I missed high school for two weeks to come on a press tour. It's an amazing, amazing experience, and the friendships I made with these other girls are just so great. Well, all of the girls said that they really did enjoy working with each other. In fact, when the cameras were not rolling, they did everything together, from hiking to seeing movies to having the good old-fashioned sleepover. The Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants is in theaters nationwide today. Not a bad way to spend the night with your little girls if you've got them. Blake Lively. She's a newcomer, you said, right? You think that's her real name? Well, or? it's her first film, Jim, yeah. but her entire family is in the business, so she may have changed it. Dad may have changed it back in the day. You just never know. Never know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she's doing quite well already. Yes, she is. Thanks, Katie. You got it.
Coming up, the crowd goes wild as an international sensation hits the Big Apple. Hear what David Beckham told New Yorkers today about his trip to America. Also a late but important decision by the judge in the Michael Jackson case. See how it could affect the jury on the eve of closing arguments, plus this. Drugs, murder, prostitution, you name it. Neighbors say this Oceanside Motel had it all. Now it's days are numbered. I'm Reed Lamberty with the story coming up. Next AT, the latest on Paris Hilton's engagement. Plus, who could be next? Then Angelina Jolie seduces Brad Pitt. It's that hot, drunken, wild, sexy night. And celebrity TV comebacks next ET. Tonight at 7.30 on CBS 2. It's easy to forget how scary the whole thing was. It was a real test in New York. People were worried. It was a sad time. People didn't know if they were going to have a job. People didn't know what to expect next. We were in a fiscal crisis. New York City took a big hit. I, Michael R. Bloomberg, do solemnly... I remember it was a very cold day when I gave my inaugural speech. My mother, she held the Bible when I got sworn in. The smoke was still coming out of the World Trade Center. Uh, conventional wisdom was people were going to leave the city in droves. He had to deal with a city that was going through one of its worst crises ever. And he established himself Im immediately as a strong and effective leader. Mayor Bloomberg came in, balanced the budget, kept the city running. Little by little, it just started to turn around. It's booming in our community now. I'm hiring people back. I'm buying new equipment. I see the economy coming back. I think not only Manhattan has come back, but all the boroughs have come back. Sometimes people forget, as a city, where we were. Mayor Bloomberg has led us through some pretty tough times. Mayor Bloomberg has security and crime under control. It's definitely safer. He has good ideas for the future. Crime is down. We have more jobs. We did good. Trust him. I think we really did the right thing in giving him a shot. has Zorbitex technology to absorb sweat and destroy odor on contact. Odor Eater's foot and sneaker spray. Stops odor. Dries crystal clear. After knee replacement surgery, I couldn't even get out of bed. Today, thanks to the rehab experts from the Visiting Nurse Service of New York, I'm putting my best foot forward. The Visiting Nurse Service of New York. We bring the caring home. Updating our top stories now at 5.30. In Hawthorne, New Jersey, investigators believe brake failure may have caused a fatal accident that killed one person. A dump truck hit a van carrying disabled passengers. The van then crashed into a minivan, slamming it into a utility pole. More than 100 surveillance cameras have been placed in 10 Brooklyn subway stations. The police department wants to see hundreds more installed throughout the city to help catch criminals and prevent crime. One day after revealing he was Watergate's deep throat, former FBI official Mark Felt is coming under fire. Former White House counsel Charles Colson says Felt should have resigned rather than leak information to the press. And former Nixon advisor Pat Buchanan says Felt himself is corrupt. We have some breaking news into the CBS2 newsroom right now. A senior official says Palestinian leader Mahmoud Abbas has undergone a heart procedure in a hospital in Jordan. Abbas took over for Yasser Arafat after Arafat's recent death. Uh, the angioplasty procedure is said to have gone well. We'll have more on this story as details become available. Jim, closing arguments in the Michael Jackson trial begin tomorrow, so today the judge clarified the charges and gave jurors their instructions for deliberations. CBS correspondent Terry Okita joins us live from Santa Maria with more. Terry. Yeah, Roz, after a day and a half of motions and jury instructions, the legal showdown will soon begin. Court watchers are focusing their attention on tomorrow's final arguments, and many believe that this, this could make or break the closing of this case. As Michael Jackson waved to loyal fans, it may be those cheers that keep his spirits up on the eve of final arguments. 
His lead attorney and the assistant district attorney are preparing for the legal showdown, set for Thursday morning. It's believed each side could get several hours for their closing. But before they begin, Judge Rodney Melville wants to ensure jurors are aware of their responsibilities and the limits of their deliberations, which could start as soon as Friday. He's reviewed jury instructions with the panelists page by page. Included in those instructions, the judge confirmed he will allow the jury to consider the charge of giving alcohol to a minor as a misdemeanor instead of a felony. That gives jurors an opening to find Jackson guilty on the alcohol charge, even if he's acquitted of molestation. With so many counts against Jackson, 10 in all, the judge ordered prosecutors to clarify for jurors which charges are tied to the young accuser's claims and which are tied to testimony of his brother. What the judge is trying to do is make things understandable and simpler for the jury. This trial has garnered international attention and media from all over the world have descended on this small town. About 2,000 journalists have been credentialed by the court. Garnered international attention. About 2,000 journalists have been credentialed by the court. Live from Santa Maria, California, I'm Terry Okita. Jim, back to you. Terry, thank you. Two teenagers caught on tape fighting with a Florida school bus driver will not be charged. This disturbing video taken last month shows one of the boys screaming at the driver who then slaps him and grabs him by the throat. The driver is facing a misdemeanor charge of battery. New York City sued and won. Now Yonkers is giving it a try. The Yonkers Board of Ed and a group of parents sued the state today over school funding. Yonkers claims it gets 40% less per pupil in state aid than Buffalo, Syracuse, and Rochester. New York City parents won a similar suit in 2001, but the state has refused to pay up pending an appeal. Police are asking for help in finding a missing elderly woman from Queens. 76-year-old Lenore Goldberg was last seen yesterday morning at her home on Beach 125th Street. She lived at the Bell Harbor Manor Adult Home. If you have seen her, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 800-577-TIPS. It has taken years, but a Long Island community's fight to close a blighted motel is one step closer to victory. Hempstead town officials have condemned the Oceanside Motel, calling it a hotbed for criminal activity. CBS 2's Reed Lamberty has more from the village of Oceanside. It's the first thing you see as you drive into Oceanside, but those who live here say the Oceanside Motel isn't exactly a welcoming sight. Oh, it ruined it. I mean, it ruined it. It brought all our values down. Nobody would, would want it to be, you know, would live over here. A motel measured not in the number of units, but the number of crimes. Too many, too close to home. Drug deals going on in front of my house, watching kids shooting up heroin. But the constant traffic of drugs, prostitution, and petty crimes that neighbors say always moves through here will be roadblocked by a bulldozer and wrecking ball. I want to throw the first brick through the window and still let me. Hempstead town officials announced today the property has been condemned and will be replaced this summer by a municipal parking lot. Soon parents will not have to worry about their children walking past this site, which has been home to sex offenders and the site of arrests for many unwelcome activities. It was based on the high number of drug arrests that gave Hempstead town officials the opportunity to take action, enacting the infrequently used public nuisance law, which allowed town officials to condemn the property. Family owned and operated for 14 years, the motel's owner says he's being unjustly targeted in what he calls a political game. Supervisor Murray is running for re-election. Any injustice done to me and my family, I will go on hunger strike with my old two children out of the property. But for locals, it's a bright future, replacing a blighted past. In Oceanside, Reed Lamberty, CBS 2 News. Here we go, here we go. Well, they're celebrating in the Bronx today. The South Bronx High School fitness team just won another national championship in California. And for the first time, both boys and girls took top honors. Let's go, jump and dance! Ready, begin! It's 7 a.m. at South Bronx High, and even though they just won a national competition in San Diego, these motivated kids are not resting on their laurels. But this sport is about heart. You have to have some natural ability, but, but it's really 90% heart. These 20 boys and girls beat out dozens more from all over the country. New York was represented well. A team from Queens took second place. For South Bronx, add another championship banner in the school's gym. The coaches say the tradition here started years ago. Many of these kids are already athletes, but others were headed for trouble. 
and got a second chance on this team. It motivated me, it kept me out of trouble uh, because I had problems back then, but now I'm doing good. The competition tests kids in all kinds of exercises like push-ups, sit-ups, broad jump, and pull-ups. But the real goal is challenging themselves and their teammates while gaining valuable lessons for life. And it sure feels good, too. Such a small school, like, when you go to other schools, you see all this equipment and all, and we hear that. The middle of South Bronx, one of the poorest regions in pretty much the country, and it gives you pride. In addition to all that tough training, the coach also tells us that all the kids have to keep good grades in order to stay on that team, and we wish them well. We do indeed. Okay, soccer superstar and British stud, David Beckham is making <laughs> quite a scene in the Big Apple. Uh, there was media madness at the Adidas store in Soho this morning <clears throat> as the heartthrob debuted his new soccer boots. The cleats are just part of his new dragon collection that includes jerseys, shorts, and pants. Beckham told the crowd why he is so excited to work in the United States. What I love about America, New York, and uh, Los Angeles is the patriotism. When you come to America, it's, you know, it's incredible. Beckham wore the boots for the first time during his U.S. debut at Giant Stadium yesterday. If you want to see more of his entire post-game interview, you can log on to our website at cbsnewyork.com and click on Featured Video in the middle of the page. Still ahead tonight, an infamous 50-year-old case has reopened. Why the body of a murdered teenager from the civil rights era was dug up today. And actress Lindsay Lohan involved in a car accident. See who she says is to blame. On the wrong side of the law, coming up at 6, a veteran Long Island detective arrested. How he allegedly turned an undercover assignment into an incredible scam. Plus, the test scores are in why city students and teachers are cheering. Next on CBS 2 News at 6. The stars, the shows, the sizzle of Broadway's hottest night. Before you watch the Tony Awards, CBS 2 takes you behind the scenes with the nominees. Join Dana Tyler, Linda Lopez, and Katie McGee backstage. CBS 2 at the Tony, Sunday at noon. Hey, where you been? Well, we needed a break from the city, so we hop in our new Nissan Pathfinder. We drive to a small town and here, hey, you got Kel's Holmes here? So we go even farther and find a dude ranch. See horses, see cowboys, see guys saying the best pizzas at Lombardi's. We head off-road to go hiking in New Mexico. New Yorkers, mud baths at the hot springs. Hey, I'm in your building. We drive farther and farther down a canyon, across a river to the most peaceful, secluded, far away from the city place, and we realize we missed you guys. Hey. The new seven-passenger, 270-horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Okay, thank you. I'm new here in front of Bank of America. The largest network of ATMs and banks in the country. Only from Bank of America. Higher standards. My name is Arena Latham Holmes. I've been a certified teacher since 1965. Every one of my students, they were my children. I worked hard, and now I deserve 100% hospitalization coverage. I need dental coverage, and I don't want to pay a penny more than what I'm already paying for Medicare. That's why I joined Oxford. If you're eligible for Medicare, call 1-800-961-0901. Brooklyn customers say Red's Pools are the pool experts. Red's took care of their pool needs since the 1950s. Now the same great product expertise is offered online at redspools.com. See above ground and in-ground pools, all shapes and sizes, decks, liners, filters, chemicals, covers, even lifeguard stands and access lifts, saunas and spas. Red's Pools are Weber Grill experts too. At Patio Furniture, the pool and patio experts are having a sale at redspools.com. To cut your property taxes, we must stop this outrageous waste. Incredible pay-to-play scandals. Contractors paying politicians for contracts, costing us billions. The state runs up over $8 billion to build half the schools it should. Now the politicians want to spend $200 million of our money to build an ice hockey arena in Newark. Let the wealthy owners foot that bill. By eliminating this outrageous waste, we'll give you the 30% property tax cut that you need and deserve. 
50 years ago, a black teenager was murdered in Mississippi for whistling at a white woman. His name was Emmett Till, and his brutal killing helped to galvanize the civil rights movement. Today, Till's body was exhumed as federal agents reopened a case from segregation's dark past. The FBI unearthed Emmett Till's casket from a suburban Chicago cemetery. A medical examiner will perform an autopsy to answer questions and dispel rumors that have lingered for half a century. Investigators hope to positively identify the body and to find more clues that could point to those involved in the slaying. Till was 14 years old when he was abducted from his uncle's home in Money, Mississippi. His mutilated body was found by fishermen three days later. Two white men were charged with the murder, Roy Bryant and his half-brother, J.W. Willem. Both were eventually acquitted by an all-white jury, but later confessed to the crime. Both have since died. Till's mother wanted the world to see the brutality towards blacks in the South, and she insisted that her son's body be displayed in an open casket for three days before the funeral. More than 250,000 people paid their respects. For him to have died a hero would mean more to me than for him just to have died. The Justice Department announced last year that it would reopen Till's murder case. Investigators say the decision was triggered by several pieces of new information and a documentary by New York filmmaker Keith Beauchamp. CBS Evening News is coming up at 6.30. John Roberts is in tonight for Bob Schieffer, and he's joining us with a preview. John? Hey, good afternoon to you, Jim, and uh, may I uh, be uh, one of the uh, later ones to uh, <laughs> welcome you back. Thank you, John. Terrific. Good to see you back. Appreciate it. Maybe your reappearance here is an indication that I'll be back at some point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, you've been in this chair, too. I have. At CBS, too. Absolutely, two. I have. Hey, coming up tonight in the CBS Evening News, we're going to give you a close-up look at those terrible landslides in Laguna Beach, California today. Bill Whitaker and Sandra Hughes are looking into that track tragedy and as well whether or not there are multiple tragedies just waiting to happen in all of those rain-soaked hills in California. That one coming up tonight. If you're uh, looking for a car, General Motors is hanging out the Blue Light Special, offering the public cars for the same price as they give them to their employees for. As much as $5,000 off on some vehicles. Anthony Mason tells us tonight it's a sign of trouble in the domestic auto industry. Deep Throat, Mark Felt, Hero or villain? We'll hear from a lot of people tonight, including President Bush. And any adult who has suffered through shingles knows just what a terrible disease it is. But is medicine on the edge of a new vaccine to prevent it? Elizabeth Caledon will look into that story for us tonight. That and a whole lot more coming your way on the CBS Evening News. And again, Jim, welcome back. Thank you, John. We'll be watching. Coming up in Health Watch, why taking prescription medication for a sleep disorder could be a recipe for a much bigger problem. And coming up at 6, an 11th hour plan is introduced in the battle over the West Side Stadium. And I'm meteorologist John Valera's Viper Radar picking up a lot of rain to the south. Will that rain make it into your backyard over the next 48 to 72 hours? You'll find out in a few moments with the complete five-day forecast and trend when we come right back. Paris in Paris. Will there be a billion dollar prenup? Who has more to lose? Then Michael Jackson's father on Michael's confession about childhood beatings. Plus danger on the high wire. What went wrong? Next Insider. Tonight at 7, only on CBS 2. So many screens, so many sports. I'm Mario Bosquez. Thursday morning starting at 5 is technology that makes watching your favorite team so much fun. Plus point-to-point -point traffic reports, Dave Price's weather forecast, and half the commercials. CBS 2 News this morning. We're making better choices every day to keep our cholesterol and blood pressure healthy. Like choosing to eat more fish and less red meat. And now we're choosing a new multivitamin, One A Day Cholesterol Plus. Introducing new One A Day Cholesterol Plus, the only complete multivitamin with polycosinol and heart-supporting nutrients to help maintain healthy cholesterol and blood pressure. For us, there's no better choice. New One A Day Cholesterol Plus.
What was that all about? What do you mean? That thing with your bag and the kids. Oh, that's just a natural reaction. Not to me, it isn't. Imagine the power of one voice. Click freedomcenter.org to find yours. of today's Ethan Allen. Introducing the new casuals. Fresh, modern, irresistibly priced. It's Ethan Allen redefined. In stores now. Doug Forrester says that Brett Schundler's property tax plan won't work. And Schundler says that Forrester's plan won't work either. Guess what? They're both right. Neither plan works. There's only one way to cut taxes, and that's to cut spending. That means standing up for taxpayers and against liberal special interests. It means standing up for home rule and against bigger state government. And it means recognizing Trenton is the problem, not the solution. Today is the first day of hurricane season, and the latest forecast warns it could be a busy one. Experts are saying the ocean continues to heat up. That means more hurricane activity in the Atlantic Ocean. Forecasters are predicting 15 named storms will pound the East Coast, with eight of them becoming hurricanes. In recent years, remnants from hurricanes and tropical storms have caused huge flooding problems in New Jersey. And uh, this doesn't bode well for us, does it, John? No, it doesn't. No. No, we'll be keeping a close eye on that this upcoming season. It's going to be very active, and uh, we're going to be uh, right on top of it. And uh, we'll be doing a little storm chasing as well and uh, keep you apprised of a very, very dangerous tropical season coming up. I'm going to expand on that in a moment. Let's check out uh, what we have first. And uh, this is some flooding, floods due to the hurricane season last year. We, I tell you what, the East Coast, the Southeast, Florida took on five hits, if you remember, last year. We were down there quite a bit trying to figure out which way these storms are going to hit, and they kind of meandered around for quite some time before they made their strikes. Very painful, slow watches. They kind of meandered up the coast. Hurricane season officially starts today, June 1st. It ends on November 30th. It's going to be very busy. Tropical storms normal for a season is 10. The forecast now is 15 by the hurricane expert, Dr. Gray. Hurricanes, again, 74-plus miles per hour. Normal for the season six. Forecast to come out with eight. Major hurricanes, that's a category three or better. Normally we get about three major hurricanes forecast to have four as far as strikes. It's hard to forecast which ones will strike, but it will be very busy. The first few of the 2005 season, Arlene, Brett, Cindy, Dennis, and Emily will keep you posted with an eye on the tropics. We're doing that right now. And the tropics right now, quiet, very active along western Cuba into the Florida area right now. They're getting some very heavy showers and storms, flooding rains from Tampa to Orlando to Jacksonville, and a lot of showers on up into Hatteras, but we're not going to see any of that activity. Just a few showers around here come Friday. Today's high, 68, normal high, 75, record high, 96 degrees, record low, 44 degrees out there. Presently, 65 degrees in Central Park. Cooler day, winds in off the ocean instead of that west wind when you heat up, east winds. This time of year, you cool down. You love the east wind in the middle of July in a heat wave on the island when you're in the 50s right now. During the mid-summer season, you're in the 70s with the east winds. That's what you want tonight. Low clouds and fog redeveloping on that moist east flow coming and bringing in the low cloud deck. Fog already beginning to move in. Tomorrow, early morning fog. Then sunshine breaking through much like today. But we add one degree, 69 degrees today, about 70 tomorrow, a little bit milder as you head inland. Watching these showers, some showers popping up in the afternoon, Friday and Friday night. Not a soaking rain event, but you will get wet Friday afternoon, Friday night. Temperatures in the mid-60s, cooler with the clouds and showers on Friday. Shortcast tomorrow morning, low clouds and fog along the Jersey Shore from Seaside Heights to Point Pleasant to Long Branch, everyone in the mid-60s. Those winds out of the southeast at 5 to 10 knots, ocean heights about 1 to 2 feet sound, about a foot. And the water temperature still cool, 54 to 58 degrees. We head eastbound, Coney Island to Long Beach to Jones Beach in the mid-60s. Low clouds and fog in the morning. Robert Moses to Fire Island, same thing. Everyone very much uniform, a little bit cooler in the extreme east end from uh, Massac Beach to Montauk Downs, 62 degrees. Tomorrow, a cool easterly wind, a good deal of morning fog. Low clouds and fog redeveloping tonight, 56. Tomorrow, morning low clouds and some fogs and sunshine, 70s, 60s along the coast. Five-day forecast, you can see 
Showers popping up Friday afternoon. Showers will taper off Saturday. Not a washout weekend for sure. Temperatures in the mid-70s. Sunday, an isolated shower. Not a bad weekend at all. Best chance of rain will be on Friday. And that trend as we go through that following week, we're looking dry and things warming up as we get into mid-June, back up into the 80s. But welcome aboard. I know it's a return trip for you. It was a return trip for me. Too. Wow. We, all, we found our old offices. That's right. Yeah. Looked the same, too, in 1987. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy! All right. At least had a coat of paint. Didn't you? No. <laughs> Thank you, You're guys. Welcome. Actress Lindsay Lohan is recovering from a car accident involving paparazzi. A spokesperson for the Mean Girl know, star I says Lohan is shaken up and sore, but she wasn't seriously hurt. Los Angeles police say a photographer struck the car that Lohan was riding in. 24-year-old Gallo Ramirez was arrested on suspicion of assaults with a deadly weapon. Up next, a possible vaccine for a very common skin disorder. We'll be right back. It starts with a dream to act, to sing, to dance. Then at last, Broadway. Applause, ovation. Then the dream of all dreams. A Tony nomination. <laughs> Winning. Well, that's just icing on the cake. Thank you so much. Join your favorite stars in live performances you can't see anywhere else. Hugh Jackman hosts the Tony Awards. Catch Broadway at its brightest live CBS Sunday. You know what they say, Prince. Big boot, big odor. Only Odor Eaters has Zorbitex technology to absorb sweat and destroy odor on contact. Odor Eaters foot and sneaker spray. Stops odor. Dries crystal clear. Furniture Factory Outlet has just hauled in train loads of fantastic new products from all over the world. At wonderful low, low, low prices. You can buy seven piece packages at $388, $398, $448, and $498. FFO has nine apps for only $98. Bucks. Bedrooms, that's only $198. Bucks. Bug beds as low as $118. And even twin mattress sets for only $36. Bucks. All aboard for the FFO savings train. Furniture Factory Outlet has same day delivery and layaway and financing is available. The prices are low at FFO. My vacuum is purple. They say it doesn't lose suction. My vacuum makes me look good. My vacuum was in a fashion magazine. My vacuum's a wind tunnel, and it cleans better than Dyson. The self-propelled wind tunnel by Hoover cleans carpet 56% better than Dyson. It's proven by the only recognized test representing real-life conditions in American homes. After all, do you want people to look at your vacuum or your clean home? Wind tunnel technology by Hoover. Clean to the highest power. Pugnacious. In other words, gray hair stinks. Just for men, swishes and dishes gray. Gray is gone. It's simplistic and naturalistic. Easy. And Claude looks splendiferous. <laughs> Just for men gel. The Rejuvenator. In tonight's Health Watch, a possible vaccine to prevent a painful childhood illness. But first, new research is a real wake-up call about the dangers of sleep medication. Dr. David Marks is here with details. David? Jim Roz, a new study in the journal Sleep says nearly half of patients with a sleep disorder will be given addictive medications. The drugs are called benzodiazepines. Now, they've been around a long time, and they're more addictive than newer types of sleeping pills. But the study found many doctors still prescribe the more addictive drugs, especially to people over 65 and those on Medicare or Medicaid. Researchers say doctors may need more education about treating patients with sleep disorders. Researchers are learning a lot more about shingles. In fact, they're close to creating a vaccine to prevent the painful skin condition. It's caused by a common childhood virus, and about a million people a year get it. It's a rash that produces such a raw pain that victims cannot stand to wear clothing or even feel air crossing their skin. At its worst, uh, it felt like someone had maybe taken a little match and was trying to burn me across, the, uh, across my side. 
Mark Cotton had only a mild shingles rash, but he was homesick for three days, and it took several weeks to recover. In more severe cases, shingles can leave people with chronic pain even after the rash disappears. Shingles occurs when the chickenpox virus becomes active again. All adults who had chickenpox are at risk, but the infection is most common in older people. So the Department of Veteran Affairs tested an experimental vaccine on more than 38,000 men and women over age 60. They found that participants who took the vaccine had half the cases of shingles as those who were not vaccinated. They also had less severe pain when they did get the infection, and there was a 66% drop in cases of long-term chronic pain. Dermatologists see a real benefit if this vaccine is approved by the Food and Drug Administration. These vaccines create an, an immune process where you're able to fight off the infection. So this is revolutionary. This vaccine is kind of like the pneumonia vaccine. Doctors will most likely give it to patients at highest risk of getting shingles. And that means people who are chronically ill and those over 60. As always, we thank you very much. Thank you. That's going to do it for us at 5. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Roz Abrams. And I'm Jim Rosenfield. Here's Maurice Dubois with the news at 6. All right, Jim and Roz, thank you. And right now at 6, it's down to the wire on the West Side Stadium. Wait until you see who's come up with a new plan to pay for the $2 billion project. The test scores are in. We'll show you how many third and fifth graders will be moving up in New York City schools. And an undercover detective accused of using top secret information to scam big bucks from area banks. This is CBS 2 News at 6. Good evening, I'm Maurice Dubois. Dana Tyler is off tonight. We begin with the West Side Stadium battle and an 11th hour plan that's now on the table. CBS 2's Marsha Kramer live on the West Side with the story. Marsha? Well, Maurice, moments ago, the governor made it official. The vote on the West Side Stadium is now going to take place Friday at 2 o'clock. That's definite. But since this is Let's Make a Deal Albany style, the outcome is expected to go down to the wire. I'd like not to speculate on what we're going to be doing on Friday. That's a lot of time from now. A lot happens in these days in this business. Senate Majority Leader Joseph Bruno was still playing it close to the vest today about whether he will support the West Side Stadium at Friday's anticipated vote of the Public Authorities Control Board. But he was not above throwing some fuel on the fire, telling reporters he's talking to private developers interested in building a stadium on the west side. The private developers would presumably pick up the state's $300 million share of construction costs and the city's $300 million tab as well. Bruno made it clear he still has questions about how the stadium will be financed, which is often an Albany euphemism for, I haven't got what I want for myself yet. There's just too much confusion. The dollars that are required move all over the place. City and state sources say it's not exactly clear what Bruno wants. Assembly Speaker Sheldon Silver, they say, wants economic incentives to encourage businesses to locate in lower Manhattan. But apparently there has been no agreement there. For his part, the executive director of the 2012 Olympics Committee tried to put pressure on Bruno and Silver by talking up the stadium's economic benefits to the city. Unfortunately, we are dealing with an enormous amount of distortion about about the, this, this project, which from an economic development standpoint is exceptional. And there was a little twist in Mayor Bloomberg's sell job today. If we were to get the Olympics, it would be phenomenal. But the answer really is we need the extension of the convention center. And the reason that you want to rent it to the Jets is they're willing to pay a billion dollars for the privilege. And what could affect everything is a court decision due tomorrow in which a judge is expected to determine whether the MTA acted appropriately in selling the Hudson Rail Yards to the Jets. Live at the Hudson Rail Yards, I'm Marsha Kramer, CBS 2 News. Maurice, back to you. Thank you, Marsha. And now to some good news for Mayor Bloomberg. Test scores are up in math and reading for third and fifth graders just two weeks after we learned they were up for fourth and eighth graders. CBS 2 education reporter Carrie Lyon has details on this. I'm extremely proud of the students. And with good reason. At PS 275 in Bushwick, more students than ever are now making the grade in reading and math. But most of all, I have to say the support that I get from the parents, the students, and the staff has really made us improve the scores. Across the city, elementary and middle school students are posting record gains. 54.8% of students are now meeting standards in reading compared to 40.4% last year. And 50% are now meeting math standards, up from 42.5% last year. 
The biggest jump in scores is among fifth graders, who for the first time could be held back if they fail one of the tests. In reading, 68.8% of fifth graders are now meeting standards, up from just 49.3% last year. And in math, 53.7% of fifth graders meet standards, compared to just 38.5% in 2004. Some attribute the gains to an overemphasis on test preparation. The mayor says... When you raise the requirements and when you hold people accountable, people perform better. That said, 9% of fifth graders, or 5,636 of them, failed one of the tests and will have to pass it in summer school to go on to the sixth grade. 9,364 third graders also failed one of the tests and are in danger of being held back as well. And while the mayor admits the schools still have a long way to go, in an election year, these scores could make it much harder for his opponents to argue students are worse off. We've made more headway in improving school student classroom performance than at any time in the city's recent history. And the mayor's opponents were relatively quiet about the results today. There are a few problem areas here, though. This year, 2,700 students are repeating the third grade, and about a third of them still didn't do well enough on these tests to go on to the fourth grade, which is bound to raise some questions about how well the city is serving the students it holds back. Maurice. Kerry, thank you. Geraldine Ferraro, the only woman ever to run on a major party presidential ticket, endorsed Fernando Ferrer today for mayor of New York City. was the 1984 Democratic Party nominee for vice president. She says the former Bronx borough president will be a strong leader locally and nationally. The former congresswoman also supported Ferrer when he ran for mayor back in 2001. With less than a week to go in the Republican primary for governor of New Jersey, a new poll shows former West Windsor mayor Doug Forrester leading former Jersey City mayor Brett Schundler by 11 points. Also today, the Democratic hopeful John Corzine unveiled his property tax plan. CBS 2's Christine Sloan has a story. U.S. Senator John Corzine, the Democratic nominee for governor, unveiled his property tax plan on the lawn of a house in East Windsor, promising homeowners relief by reinstating the rebate program. Ninety percent of the public, ninety percent of the public, they will get a rebate including renters, by the way. The senator spoke at Linda Harris's home, who says her property taxes have doubled over the past 20 years. And you think Senator Corzine's plan will help you? Well, it sounds interesting. My husband seems to wonder why the money has to go somewhere, and then they have to send us a check back. He would like to be able just to take a reduction and say, there we are. Corzine spoke in a neighborhood not too far from Doug Forrester's town, where you could find signs supporting the Republican candidate, who is calling for a 30 percent reduction in property taxes. A new poll finds Forrester is a Republican with the best chance of beating Corzine. Ours is an automatic rebate program as well in terms of a state credit. It doesn't go filtered through towns. It goes right, boom, to, you know, the property tax and the homeowner. One of Forrester's Republican challengers, Brett Schundler, who doesn't have the money to rival either Forrester or Corzine, Design is coming out with his first television commercial. Young couple having to delay the dream of owning a home. Schundler wants a constitutional amendment to limit spending and reduce property taxes. Well, what my plan does is put spending limits in place that are reasonable at all levels of government, and then it has the state mandated to send a lot more of your sales and income tax money back to your local public schools and municipal government to lower your property taxes. All of the candidates say the best way to lower property taxes is to cut fraud and waste here in Trenton and to end corruption at all levels of government. Some people will tell you keeping that promise will be the biggest challenge. In Trenton, Christine Sloan, CBS 2 News. All seven Republican candidates will be here on Sunday for their final televised debate just two days before the primary on June 7th. We invite you to join us at 11 a.m. Sunday morning right here on CBS 2. People in Yonkers will have to pay more to live and work there. They'll even have to pay to move out. City Council has approved a tax hike there. The $751 million spending plan increases property taxes by four and three quarters percent. Also, the income tax surcharge is doubled from 5% to 10, and the real estate transfer tax, which you pay when you sell your home, goes from 1% to 1.5%.
Officers are investigating the possibility that brake failure caused a deadly chain reaction accident in northern New Jersey. This happened this morning in Hawthorne. Witnesses tell us a driver lost control of a dump truck and slammed into a van carrying several disabled passengers. The van then crashed into a minivan and pinned it against a utility pole. It came in a rescue truck and uh, I just started helping taking victims out of the car, you know, with the Maverick tool and just counting up and it was a mess. One person was killed, eight others were hurt and taken to the hospital. Investigators are now inspecting the truck. Tonight, police want your help in catching a brazen thief. He walked into a building on Wall Street in the middle of the day yesterday and walked out with a computer. Even though he got away, he was caught on several security cameras. Here's CBS 2's Pablo Guzman. He's about six feet tall or so, and because it seems he'd been in the building before, he knew enough to tell the security guard he was going to a particular company on the 13th floor. And here he is later on that floor, the offices of an employment agency, which he probably knew were pretty empty because the company is relocating elsewhere in the building, but back to the surveillance cameras in the lobby. As you can see, he even signs in. This is a copy of that log. Police have it also. And they have a copy of these tapes made by the employment agency's cameras inside their offices and by the cameras in the lobby with a quality that impressed even police made separately by the building's operators, Braun Management. When you look at all those camera angles, yours and the ones from the employment agency, it looks almost as if he was familiar with the building. That's what it seems. That's what it seems. And people said that they do recognize him and that he's been to this building uh, several times before. Inside the empty employment office, you can see what he sees. He comes in, closes the door, looks around, and then sees the laptop in another office. Someone else comes in unexpectedly. The guy comes out again to make sure he's safe. When he leaves, you have to look closely for the bulge under his shirt. That's the laptop. But by the time he thinks he's making his getaway in the lobby, he gets bold again. And there, you see the laptop clearly. All told, he's in and out in about nine minutes. And now, if any of you recognize this guy, the police would like you to pick up the phone. 1-800-577-TIPS. Nobody will ever know that you made that call. 1-800-577-TIPS. And take another Bye. good look at this person. Pablo Guzman, CBS 2 News. Coming up, coming up here tonight at 6 o'clock, how police say an undercover detective used his job to work on the wrong side of the law. Also, see how a Homeland Security investigation smoked out a local family accused of burning down their own home. Plus, why a judge came down hard on a nanny accused of neglecting a toddler. Plus, outstanding weather, John. Oh, another outstanding day. Yeah, it was a little bit cooler, but nice and dry with sunshine after some early morning fog. We're watching some showers to the south. Will it rain on your upcoming weekend? You'll find out in just a few months. Closed caption is brought to you by Toyota. Choose any direction as long as it's moving you forward. How long does it take to get hooked on the newest CSI? About a New York Minute tonight. We have a serial dumping bodies all over the city. See how it all began with the first episode. Don't do it! CSI New York, CBS Tonight. Then, caution for wine lovers. Tonight at 11, CBS 2 uncorks a new trend in wines that could take you by surprise. See why some are sounding the alarm and what you need to know about extreme wines. Now, Jim Rosenfield joins Roz Abrams on CBS 2 News at 11 tonight. Cablevision would love for you to believe the relentlessly negative campaign against the proposed Westside Stadium, Mayor Bloomberg, and the Jets. When the truth is that a new stadium would generate tens of thousands of jobs and hundreds of millions in new tax revenue for New York. So why is Cablevision doing everything it can to distort the facts? Because we've been a monopoly. 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 Well, that explains that. To find out more about what a new stadium could really do for New York, go to www.votforjobs.com. Now it's easy to afford beautiful, professionally installed hardwood and laminate floors. Just call Empire today. We'll bring a wide variety of quality brand name hardwood and laminate flooring to choose from, right at home. All durable and easy to care for. And we'll professionally install your new flooring the next day, at no extra charge. In fact, you save with our warehouse direct prices. Plus, no payments for one year. Call Empire today for quality flooring and save. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE Today.
So, we got a deal on this car? It's good to know your money's ready. No. Call me when you find a red one. Even if you're not. The Orange Savings Account. Your cash on call. One of America's highest yields. No fees, no minimums, and no catches. Call 1-800-ING-DIRECT. Isn't it about time someone took an axe to New Jersey's state budget? I'm Steve Lonigan. As mayor, I froze spending, cut debt, and kept taxes below inflation. As governor, I'll do the same. Fight for small businesses and suburban taxpayers. By cutting state spending, reducing taxes and regulations, and protecting home rule. My opponents think Trenton can solve our problems. They're wrong. Trenton is the problem, not the solution. Steve Lonigan for governor. It's time for a change. Time for a conservative change. Police in Nassau County were shocked when a well-respected detective in their department surrendered to face felony charges of fraud. CBS 2's Long Island reporter Jennifer McLogan has details of today's surprise arrest. Fellow officers say they're stunned and embarrassed. He's been a decorated veteran Nassau County undercover cop, earning some $100,000 a year. Were you stealing from Texas? But investigators arrested Detective Rodolfo Barrio, one of their own, and charged him with using his undercover alias to go on a personal spending spree. We discovered the misuse of the undercover identity, which included misuse of a fictitious social security number that uh, Detective Barrio had obtained as an undercover detective. Nassau County investigators for whom he worked, the detective was credited recently for cracking a big fortune-telling scheme, and Nassau Police Internal Affairs discovered Detective Barrio was allegedly using his department-provided undercover identity, Joseph Batista, and the Batista Social Security number to obtain 23 false credit lines exceeding 60000 bucks, running up huge debts at at least three banks and taking tens of thousands in computers, furniture, automotive products, appliances, and electronics from these stores to his own home he used to share with his wife and two children. The detective is recently divorced. In this particular situation, there's definitely a betrayal of trust uh, and uh, a risk to law enforcement's uh, continued use of, of undercover identities. The detective pled not guilty. He was released on his own recognizance. His lawyer tells me there's an honest explanation for what happened. In the meantime, the detective is suspended. The investigation here continues. From Mineola, Jennifer McLogan, CBS 2 News. And it was sentencing day today for an Eastchester nanny who left a toddler home alone while she went Christmas shopping. Victoria Brathwaite was given three years probation. The judge added on 75 hours of community service because she said the nanny didn't comprehend the seriousness of the crime. Brathwaite pleading guilty to one count of child endangerment after being arrested in December for leaving a 16-month-old girl alone. The toddler was unharmed, however. Still ahead tonight, how building a dream home after a holiday fire landed a couple in hot water with the law. And there's some rain on the way. What's that got to do with your weekend? John with the answer and your forecast. Brian Walker gets in early to tutor kids. Greer Hansen sticks around after school to give extra help. Roberta Hairston stays up late grading papers. They're teachers, and while they have a lot to be proud of, they've worked two years without a contract, making 15% less than suburban teachers. Mr. Mayor, our city has a record $3 billion surplus, so isn't it time our teachers were paid fairly? New York's teachers deserve a fair contract. They earn it every day. Cadillac presents a drive down Broadway. Like Cadillac, the Tony Awards represent the symbol of excellence in their field. This year has been filled with some breakthrough hits that have been nominated for Best Musical. Will the winner be Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, The Light in the Piazza, Monty Python's Spamalot, or the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee? Which breakthrough musical will go home with a big prize? Tune in to the Tony Awards on CBS 2, June 5th. Presented locally by Cadillac. Want to sell your used car fast? Then listen to where people in the tri-state area go to find one. Sell your car with autotrader.com. It's proven. More people are switching from the newspaper to the internet to find their next car. And autotrader.com is the place in the tri-state area people turn to when looking for a used car. And brings you shoppers who are ready to buy. Call 1-866-AUTOTRADER. Visit autotrader.com to sell your car fast. With newspapers, not only do you get a small ad, but only a small portion of readers are even looking for a used car. 
But with autotrader.com, virtually every visitor is looking to buy one. So when you list with autotrader.com, you get a motivated local audience and all this for just $44. So why list your car in the newspaper classifieds when you can sell it with autotrader.com? Sell your car fast. Call 1-866-AUTOTRADER or visit autotrader.com today. When we're choosing governor, I think we ought to look at the record of the candidates. You know what, Mr. Schundler? We did. We got the spending down. No, you didn't. Under you, spending in Jersey City went up $84 million. We got the property taxes down. Wrong again. The average property tax bill went up $306. Folks, if you want property tax reduction, then go with someone who's actually proven it. Tax bills increased 18%, and your own campaign literature admitted it. Look at our record. No wonder your campaign's been described as negative and shallow. These kids are learning Chinese. Why, you may ask? There are about a billion answers to that question. The story tonight on the CBS Evening News on CBS 2. Experience you can trust. A husband and wife team accused of being partners in crime face some serious charges tonight. Police in Connecticut say they set their own home on fire to try to collect the insurance money. It happened in Trumbull. And that's where CBS 2's Jennifer Jordan picks up the story. Once a dream home, now a crime scene. Police in Trumbull say Randall and Angela LeCarrie used $350,000 of insurance money to rebuild a bigger home on the same lot where the original once stood. The couple's home on Huntington Turnpike burned to the ground in 2002, just days before Christmas. Initially, we had no reason to suspect that it was uh, an arson case. Uh, we believe it was accidental. But now, three years later, Trumbull police say the LeCarries deliberately set the blaze and moved their valuables, including Christmas gifts for their two daughters, to a storage facility just days before the fire. Mr. LeCarry works for the New York Department of Environmental Protection and claims he was working when the flames broke out. Police say otherwise. Mr. LeCarry had left his workplace in New York, traveled back to the home in Trumbull, and uh, set the fire before returning back to New York. Authorities say the crime was uncovered during a Homeland Security investigation but would not give further details. The tragedy prompted an outpouring of support from neighbors who held fundraisers to help replace the children's Christmas gifts. Mrs. LeCarry was taken into custody at the home Friday night and is now free on $7,000 bond. She had no comment as she sped away from our cameras today. Her husband turned himself into authorities yesterday morning and remains behind bars. He was arraigned today on felony arson and insurance fraud charges. His attorney says both charges are frivolous. They had pretty much finished the interior renovations of the house that they had bought maybe four years earlier. And uh, it doesn't make much sense that somebody would burn down their house after they renovated it. Both husband and wife now face up to 10 years behind bars. Jennifer Jordan, CBS 2 News. John Belaris here with yet another winner of the oh, day. Oh, beautiful day today. A little bit cooler. Had that east wind today, and that's the little ocean effect. Keeps temperatures uh, quite a bit cooler. Let's check out our view and see what we have today on a day that saw temperatures only in the 60s today. Well, that was a beautiful shot right there. Only, well, yeah, we were in the upper 70s yesterday, and today in the 60s, we had that east wind today. And, and let's see, what's our temperature high today? 68 degrees, a normal high 75, record high 96, your record low 44 degrees in 1945. Temperatures out there right now, cooler city along the coast, 62, officially in Central Park, Morristown, 72, Newburgh, the same. Tom's River, cooler Jersey Shore, 57 across the island. Look at that. In the 70s yesterday, in the 50s today, winds in off the ocean. You had the morning fog, White Plains, 64 tonight. That east went around the high pressure along the northeast. That will keep us cooler. Low clouds and fog redeveloping tonight. In many locations along the south shore of Long Island right now, that is taking place. Your Thursday, again, you wake up to low clouds and some fog and sunshine breaking through late morning hours into the afternoon. A day like today, instead of 69 degrees, 68, we had a couple 70 degrees. And then some showers coming up the coast by Friday afternoon. Not a complete washout, but enough to get you wet and uh, may break into some outdoor activities Friday afternoon into Friday night. And by the weekend, these showers will be moving out, and most of your weekend should be rain-free, and you'll get in the outdoor activity. Shortcast for tomorrow morning, low clouds and fog from Seaside Heights to Long Branch, so sleep a little bit later, and that will burn away to some afternoon sunshine. Again, though, temperatures in the mid-60s along the shore points due to those southeast winds. 
Wave heights 1 to 2 in the ocean sound about a foot. Robert Moses, Far Island, mid-60s. And the east end, 64, Massing Beach, Bridgehampton, the same. East Hampton, 63, Montau Gown, 62 degrees. Forecast for tonight, low clouds and fog developing 56. Stray shower in Sullivan County. Tomorrow, early fog and sunshine, 70 degrees, 60s. Coastal sections, five-day forecast. Showers breaking out Friday afternoon into Friday night. May linger into Saturday morning, perhaps the latest early Saturday afternoon, then breaking out to some sunshine. And Sunday, an isolated shower, but nice. Most of the weekend dry and temperatures in the 70s. Best chance of showers will be Friday afternoon into Friday night. And the game at Shady Night will be fine. Just maybe a little clouds, a little fog. We had enough lousy stuff to last a lifetime. That's right. So now it's we'll, about time. We're enjoying. Thank you, Johnny You're B. Welcome. All right, coming up in sports in just a moment, the latest on the Yankees and the Mets. And how about some football in June? A few new faces in East Rutherford as the Giants open minicamp. Chris Raggy next. Next ET, the latest on Paris Hilton's engagement. Plus, who could be next? Then Angelina Jolie seduces Brad Pitt. It's that hot, drunken, wild, sexy night. And celebrity TV comebacks next ET. Tonight at 7.30 on CBS2. The stars, the shows, the sizzle of Broadway's hottest night. Before you watch the Tony Awards, CBS2 takes you behind the scenes with the nominees. Join Dana Tyler, Linda Lopez, and Katie McGee backstage. CBS2 at the Tony, Sunday at noon. And later, the ultimate dream for anyone is winning a Tony Award. Thank you so much. Join your favorite stars in live performances you can't see anywhere else. Hugh Jackman hosts the Tony Awards. Catch Broadway at its brightest. Live CBS Sunday. Doug Forrester says that Brett Schundler's property tax plan won't work. And Schundler says that Forrester's plan won't work either. Guess what? They're both right. Neither plan works. There's only one way to cut taxes, and that's to cut spending. That means standing up for taxpayers and against liberal special interests. It means standing up for home rule and against bigger state government. And it means recognizing Trenton is the problem, not the solution. My Trundle Works works because it's two beds in one. A twin bed that instantly becomes two. It works because it's complete with two mattresses. Not $8.99. Not even $6.99. My Trundle Works just $4.99. If you carry this card, you want this card. The AARP Medicare Supplement Insurance Plan Card. Even with Medicare, you could still pay nearly half of your medical bills out of your own pocket. If you're 65 or over, this card can help pay for what Medicare doesn't. This is one powerful card. It represents the only Medicare supplement plan endorsed by AARP. Why an AARP Medicare supplement plan? Because you can keep your own doctors without any referrals and no claim forms. Prescription drug coverage is available, and AARP group rates are competitively priced. Call to get free information about these plans underwritten by United Healthcare Insurance Company. There's no obligation, and it's easy to change to an AARP plan. Call now, and you'll also get this free booklet. Call now even if you're not an AARP member yet, and join more than 2 million members enjoying the benefits of this powerful card. Call now. Technology that makes watching sports a lot of fun Thursday morning, starting at 5. All right, time for Chris's sports. What's up with the Yankees? Who knows? You would have thought last night would have been a nice night for them to break out. What is it about teams on the brink of contraction that bring out the worst in the Yankees? The Devil Rays took three of four against the Bombers when they were bombing a month ago. And last night, one of the worst teams around, the Royals, taking it to a team in need of a win after having dropped two or three to Boston. Robinson Cano, oh no, that error did nothing to help the Yanks or Kevin Brown, but the kid has been solid throughout the Yankee resurgence. Let's give him that. Tonight, Randy Johnson with a shot at another statement game. Joe Torre will be back on the bench tonight after serving that one game suspension. The Mets equally bad last night. Shea had been good to the Mets. The Amazons 16 and 9 at Shea coming into last night's game, but the D-backs taking it to Chris Benson. Benson falling to 3 and 2 on the year. He gave up four runs on eight hits. Conversely, the D-backs Brad Halsey, the former Yankee who went to Arizona in the Randy Johnson deal was dealing last night. 7 innings, 6 hits, no runs and Carlos Beltran's return 0 for 4. The Mets left eight men on base, losing seven to nothing tonight. Miguel Cairo will play second once again. The Mets need a win. We, you know, we have a long home stand, and if you get a W early, you want to continue to uh, grow on that. So uh, 
you know, we'll, we'll get one tonight and then continue to play, and, uh, you know, we have a ways to go. You know, we'd like to get be a little more consistent, and obviously, uh, you know, coming off what we did in Florida was, you know, was very positive, and hopefully, uh, hopefully tonight we'll get back on track. We'll see what happens. The Giants are back on the field. Yes, the Giants. The veteran minicamp began today at the Meadowlands. The G-Men getting all the offensive weapons in place. Shockey back from Miami with that incident. Eli Manning, who has never left in control, the newest weapon in the Giants' arsenal, Plaxico Burris there who is, of course, looking to tax defenders. Duke Castiglione with the team earlier today. We have a lot of, a lot of weapons on offense now, and, and the quarterback's trying to make sure they get the ball and, and let them use their athletic ability to get downfield. As a quarterback, um, you, know, you have to be a leader of the team. You have to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody's on the same page. One thing I noticed from Eli is that Eli probably has the strongest arms that I've caught from. Uh, I was telling him the other day, I mean, hey, you know, take a little bit of mustard off. I'm only 10 yards from me. <laughs> He does like to throw hard. Michael Strahan has had a public, tumultuous offseason. Details of his separation to his wife, Jean. Front page fodder for the papers today. Stray back on his playing field and fielding questions about his job, not just his personal life. Strahan, quick to point out, he's got a much better feeling about Colonel Coughlin than he did this time last year. Coaches change a lot of things, too, about himself. I think we all, we all adjusted to each other, and I think that's the important thing. And uh, everybody's figured each other out and got more comfortable with, with what he expects, and he's more comfortable with what he knows he's going to get out of it. David Beckham Week continues here on CBS2. Today, Beckham and his legions of fans crammed into the Adidas store downtown today, and this is a sure sign of celebrity. Nothing says superstar like bongo drums. David Beckham, footballer, media, and Madison Avenue sensation. Still in the Big Apple, receiving the rock star treatment. Today, his latest football cleat on display. It's uh, pretty incredible. You know, I, uh, I have it sort of, you know, all around the world. And, uh, you know, being in New York in the last couple of days, you know, the popularity side for me is, has been incredible. Yes, the paparazzi follows this man everywhere whether it's in england spain here the sneakers the predator yeah. pretty hot stuff if you're a Silver soccer player shoes too yeah they got a little uh, red dragon in there too it's pretty nice hot stuff. yeah all right i'll get you guys a couple yeah, please don't. i know you're a big fan never mind <laughs> thank you chris all right let's look ahead to cbs 2 news at 11 tonight jim rosenfield in our newsroom right now jim maurice at 11 recent studies show a glass of red wine may a day may actually be good for your health but how much alcohol is in the wine you drink See why that glass of Merlot may be packing a little more of a punch these days and why just a little bit could make you a bit more woozy. Kirsten Cole uncorks everything you need to know tonight at 11. Maurice? All right, thank you, Jim. We'll be watching, and that's going to do it for CBS 2 News at 6 tonight. I'm Maurice Dubois. Dana Tyler is off. Next on the CBS Evening News, they'll have all the day's top stories, including more on that landslide in Southern California. Have a good evening. We'll see you tomorrow. Good evening, I'm John Roberts. Tonight, the earth gives way in Southern California, sending multi-million dollar homes crashing down a hillside. We'll begin in Laguna Beach tonight. Then, we'll have these stories. Have we got a car deal for you? I'm Anthony Mason, why GM is putting up the sale sign. I'm Wyatt Andrews. Deep Throat today is being called a hero, but also a turncoat. I'm Elizabeth Caledon with the experimental vaccine that could bring relief to millions of people. I'm Richard Schlesinger with the story of what kids are talking about today and in what language. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. And Bob is off tonight. There are few things more important than feeling safe in your own home. But in one Southern California neighborhood this morning, a home was about the most dangerous place you could be. It was just before 7 o'clock. Houses in Laguna Beach suddenly started making funny noises, creaking, then cracking. Within minutes, as Bill Whitaker reports, the hundreds of startled people inside were running for their lives. People describe these hills above the Pacific as a bit of paradise. Jill Lockhart said this morning her Laguna Beach hillside was more like hell. We got out as it was cracking behind us and sinking. They were like big sinkholes. 
it was it was crazy. I've never seen anything like it. It wasn't just a house sliding down a hill. It was the 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 earth was collapsing below us. I was sitting in my family room and at about a quarter to seven, a loud explosion sounded actually like a gunshot. And my wife came running out of the bedroom, said, "Who's shooting?" The slow-moving landslide shoved million-dollar houses off their foundations, snapped some in half, left others on edge. At least 18 houses totally destroyed, dozens of others in danger of collapse. It buckled roads and driveways and had people running for their lives. He's like, you're going to have to get airlifted out of here if you don't leave right now. I knew that something it was coming down, so I just grabbed my two-year-old and grabbed my four-year-old, and we ran out, and we were running as the gravel was cracking behind us. Miraculously, there were only five minor injuries, but there were many more disrupted lives. A thousand people were forced to leave their homes. My understanding is we have about 500 homes without power right now, and the ground is still moving up here. Boy, I got a bunch of them. A portion of this hill gave way once before. Back in 1978, 14 houses were destroyed. With the intense storms this winter, twice as much rain as usual, people worried it might happen again. But it hasn't rained for several weeks, and residents started to feel safe. The truth of the matter is, we're fighting Mother Nature, and Mother Nature's gonna do what she wants. Thank God I got the kids out. Thank God we're alive. The house is gone. We'll never... Now, the mayor has asked that this be declared a disaster area. With this hill still so unstable, no one knows when or if the evacuees will be allowed to return home. John? Bill, were these people covered at all by insurance for that? Well, John, as beautiful as these houses are, they're almost uninsurable, at least as far as mudslides are concerned. If there's been a mudslide before, neither the state nor the insurance companies will insure them. And since 1978, these folks have not been covered for the kind of event that happened today. So some of these people might have just lost everything. Bill Whitaker in Laguna Beach, thanks very much. The landslides today were just the latest in a series of weather-related disasters in California, and the fear is that there are more to come. Our coverage continues now with Sandra Hughes. California's rainy season started out deadly and dangerous and hasn't let up. Since last October, more than 1,800 homes have been destroyed throughout Southern California by the weather and its aftermath. Some 40 people have died. Get out of here! Hardest hit? The coastal community of La Conchita, where a wall of mud crashed down on top of 15 homes in January, killing 10 people in a matter of minutes. Months later, many residents can't or won't leave. It scared quite a few people away, uh, but not homeowners. Uh, most of our homeowners have stayed. Lois and Ernie Buchan returned just last night to spend their first night back in their La Conchita no, home. No, no. We got another little place to stay in uh, during the rainy months. The dangers along the California coast aren't going away. The U.S. Geological Survey recently released a report on the La Conchita disaster and the news isn't good. The report says the La Conchita area will likely continue to experience a rather bewildering variety of landslide hazards. A California geologist says it's a danger that faces many waterlogged hillsides along the coast. We can expect to have mass movement in Southern California for months to come, even after it has stopped raining. And back in La Conchita, signs warn visitors that the hillside is still unstable. The county of Ventura has no plans to shore up the hill, which has twice now given way on top of this town. That may worry residents, but not enough to send them house hunting. If the sun was out, the weather would be perfect. If it was sprinkling, the weather would be perfect. If it was raining, then I'd be watching the hill. The hill that almost everyone agrees has the potential to destroy more homes if left untouched. And right now, there are no plans to fix it. John. Sandra Hughes tonight for us and is still recovering La Conchita. Sandra, thanks. The top two U.S. automakers are blaming high gasoline prices for another bad month. Ford sales in May slid nearly 3%, and General Motors were off more than 5%. Hoping to turn things around, General Motors is now offering big discounts on nearly all its models. CBS News business correspondent Anthony Mason has that story. The sales signs went up today. For the next month, GM is offering car buyers the same discount it gives to its own employees. So on this Chevy Impala, for example, I'd save how much money? Save a little over $5,000 on this particular model. But it's not a sign of good times for GM. It's a direct reflection of poor sales this year. Chubba Chetta, editor of Car and Driver, says the world's largest automaker is losing ground. GM's in very serious trouble at this point. It's probably the biggest trouble the company has been in in the last 20 years. 
GM lost more than a billion dollars in the first three months of the year and said today sales were down more than 5% in May as higher gas prices drove customers away from more profitable SUVs. And that's only the beginning. Rising health care costs are choking the company. With two and a half retirees for every current employee, GM pays health benefits to more than a million people. That adds about $1,600 to the cost of every car or truck the company makes. It's a gigantic deficit that GM has to overcome from the very start. So they start out with a negative $1,600 on every vehicle. After discontinuing the declining Oldsmobile, there's talk of cutting back other struggling GM brands like Buick and Pontiac. GM hopes the debut of the Pontiac Solstice this summer will improve that brand's image. It's not going to turn around the company. They need several image cars like that, and then they need a couple of key high-volume blockbusters. For GM's chairman, Rick Wagoner, that means more rough road ahead. How he handles the drive could have a huge impact on our economy. From parts suppliers to car salespeople, it's estimated GM supports nearly 900,000 jobs, John. A lot of people, Anthony. How much is this sale expected to help them? GM is probably not going to make a nickel on this, John. They're just trying to clear unsold inventory, but it's a chance for car buyers to save as much as $8,000. A lot of vehicles. Something to stop the bleeding, but something good for consumers. Yeah. Yeah. Anthony, thanks very much. Unlike General Motors and Ford, Japanese automakers are enjoying generally strong sales in this country, but now Toyota is facing a big problem. Reports of potentially dangerous engine trouble with its hot-selling hybrid car, the Prius. Bob Orr has been looking into that for us. Years before the Toyota Prius even hit U.S. showrooms, the Japanese car maker boasted about the car's potential to change the way we drive. Get 66 miles to gallon and uh, over 850 miles on a tank of gas. The first of the anti-pollution hybrid cars has fallen short of those mileage goals. But now there may be even a bigger problem with the gasoline electric powered vehicles. U.S. safety regulators are investigating complaints from 33 Prius owners who claim their hybrids stalled while traveling between 35 and 65 miles per hour. One driver said, I do not have the same confidence in the car. Another Prius owner wrote, I was extremely concerned for my safety and would be scared to drive the car again. Look, there's no question that this is very serious for Toyota. The company has bet the farm on hybrid technology. It's going to put it in everything. Every single model that they sell is ultimately going to have a hybrid version of it. Auto analyst John McElroy says Toyota doesn't know what's causing the stalling or how difficult it will be to fix. In a statement, Toyota played down the problem. There were no deaths or injuries reported. We remain confident in the safety of these vehicles. Since the Prius entered the U.S. market in 2000, it's been hot. More than 166,000 of them have been sold, and people are still waiting in line to pay premium prices to own one. But the investigation could threaten hybrid sales. If it turns out to be a very widespread problem, they're going to be in trouble. Then a lot of people are going to say, wait a minute, I'll let them work out the bugs before I go buy this new technology. And that would be a huge economic hit for Toyota and the entire auto industry, which is counting on hybrids to boost sales cut pollution and save gasoline. Bob Orr, CBS News, Washington. A decisive no vote, or knee as they say in Holland today, dealt another serious, possibly fatal blow to a proposed constitution for the European Union. Nearly 62% of Dutch voters rejected the plan just three days after a similar outcome in France. To take effect next year, the constitution must be approved by all 25 member nations of the European Union. Coming up next on tonight's CBS Evening News, we now know that he was deep throat was Mark Felt, a hero as well. That's tonight's inside story. But first, Bob Schieffer with this note. CBS News honors fallen heroes. Clint Gertson, a six foot four country boy, raised on a Texas rice farm. He liked driving and working on ATVs and trucks. After 9-11, he became an army sniper. He had great sympathy for Iraqi children. One day, when he saw a boy with a broken bike, he stopped and fixed it for him. Gertson was killed by a sniper. In his last call, he said, tell everyone freedom isn't free. Lucky me, I've got a Splenda Daddy. All the sweetest dads know about Splenda, the no-calorie sweetener made from sugar, so it tastes like sugar. Almost anywhere you use sugar, you can use Splenda. My doctor said I needed fiber, but Metamucil is thick and gritty. 
my doctor said I should take Benefiber. Benefiber has just as much fiber and never gets thick or gritty. Ask your doctor about Benefiber. For me, the choice is clear. Now improved, Roundup Plus knocks out weeds in 12 hours. The leading imitator doesn't. Now improved, Roundup Plus knocks out weeds in 12 hours. Let me plant this thought with you. If you're a woman like me, it's a good idea to talk to your doctor about prescription Actonel. A-C-T-O-N-E-L. Act now and fight back with Actonel. I hear something. A thump, a thump, a thump. That's my heart talking to you. Does it ever say anything else? If you want to keep your heart healthy, Cheerios, made from all natural whole grain oats, is the only leading cold cereal clinically proven to lower cholesterol. I hear corp, corp. That's my stomach. Your stomach talks too? Mm-hmm. Look for the General Mills whole grain. Guarantee. The promotion. A new title. A bigger paycheck. Better days ahead. Your hard work paid off, and so did that extra confidence from getting rid of your gray hair with Just For Men hair color. Just For Men targets only the gray hair, replaces it with subtle tones for a natural look in five easy minutes. When you feel confident, it shows. Just for men. The Rejuvenator. Look, Mold, she's about to choose a seasonal allergy medicine. Pick one of those. You could be suffering in six hours. Choose any of those. You could be drowsy. Allegra 180 lasts all day and non-drowsy. Why did I even pack those others? Not one of these allergy medicines can give you long-lasting seasonal allergy relief without the risk of drowsiness. But Allegra 180 can. Non-drowsy Allegra's worked all day. For people 12 and over, side effects alone may include headache, cold, or backache. Allegra's going to work all night, too. Long-lasting Allegra. The relief goes on. Now that we know who Deep Throat was, what he did three decades ago is getting a new look. Were the actions of the veteran FBI man Mark Felt during the Watergate investigation brave and noble, or were they something quite a bit less than that? It all depends who you ask. Is Wyatt Andrews reports in tonight's Inside Story. He helped unveil a scandal and unseat a president, but was Mark Felt, the man called Deep Throat, a hero or an FBI turncoat? All I feel like is 92 years old. The hero question is so hot in Washington, the president ducked it by a mile. It's hard for me to judge, I'm learning more about the situation. To Nixon loyalists, the legacy of Deep Throat is one of dishonor. Bernard Barker, one of the Watergate burglars, showered Deep Throat with contempt. I think he is a crumb, and I think that um, I don't see how he can live with himself. Nixon's speechwriter, Pat Buchanan, says Feld should have told his boss, or even the president, not a reporter. Well, I think Mark Felt um, dishonored his code to the FBI. He broke the law. He gave away secrets he shouldn't have given away. What Mark Felt did while number two at the FBI was to steer Washington Post reporter Bob Woodward toward the stories of unthinkable corruption inside the White House. Deep Throat revealed that former CIA agent Howard Hunt worked for the White House and planned the Watergate break-in, that former Attorney General John Mitchell paid for the break-in, and that the President's Chief of Staff, H.R. Haldeman, controlled a cash fund to finance political dirty tricks. So why didn't Felt report this to his boss, FBI Director L. Patrick Gray? because Gray was allowing the White House to control the investigation. Well, there wasn't any place to go higher up for Mark Felt. Former Watergate prosecutor Richard Benveniste says without the Post and Deep Throat's information, the Watergate cover-up might have succeeded. You view him with respect. I view him as having done a service to the country in providing this information. At the Washington Post, Felt is a hero for all the risks he took. I think it was, a, it was a gutsy thing to do. He knew his career was in the balance. Perhaps what's most revealing is that Mark Felt himself had a conflict over being seen as a hero. He had clung to his secrecy for 30 years precisely because he feared his action would, would look bad, only to be persuaded by his family he'd be seen with honor. John? So Wyatt, is there going to be a book about all of this? And, and who's it going to come from, the family? Uh, John, it gets interesting from here because 
Uh, Mark Felt apparently remembers being Deep Throat, but not the details. So you have to wonder where a book would come out of that. Bob Woodward, on the other hand, has a book virtually ready to go. And so if there's a competition between the family and Woodward over marketing this story, Woodward would seem to have the edge. Boy, competition for a 30-year-old secret. You'd you think that they would have had this figured out by now. Wyatt Andrews outside the Watergate. Thanks very much. Still to come on the CBS Evening News, shingles. Over the years, millions have come down with the painful virus. Now a new vaccine shows promise. Details coming up on the Health Watch. stomach anymore? Oh. Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer is the only medicine that breaks up and dissolves away stomach discomfort and pain fast. Uh, ice cream? Alka-Seltzer. The Braun Activator's smart foil captures hair growing in any direction for a closer shave. And its cleaning center keeps it feeling like new every day. The Braun Activator, the world's best self-cleaning shaver guaranteed. Uh-oh, want better allergy relief? Benadryl's proven more effective than the leading allergy medicine at relieving your worst allergy symptoms, like runny nose, sneezing, itchy nose, and watery eyes. Benadryl, proven more effective. Denture wearers, we stained a string of pearls in barbecue sauce, not just to prove the stain-removing strength of Effort N Plus or the freshening power of its Listerine ingredients, but to give every denture wearer the confidence to show those pearly whites. The confident clean of Effordent Plus. I am slowly and reluctantly getting used to an empty nest. I still hang up the kids' old holiday decorations. I will try to be the mother-in-law that doesn't interfere. I have a Discover card and I use the money back to really spoil my granddaughter. I bought her a swing set. I think I'm enjoying it as, as much as she is. <laughs> this is our card, the Discover card. How Hank tricked the hound by Shaw. Hank chose Shaw unscented. Stanley applied a macho smell. There they go. Oh, Rex has picked up a scent, but only Stanley's, because Hank seems undetectable. Good plan, Hank. Odor free, Shaw unscented. Protection that's undetected. Me and BB King have a lot in common. We both have diabetes. He doesn't like to wait for results. I don't like to wait. All done within five seconds. Now you just can't beat that. Ask for One Touch Ultra. One Touch changes everything. Brian Walker gets in early to tutor kids. Greer Hansen sticks around after school to give extra help. Roberta Hairston stays up late grading papers. They're teachers, and while they have a lot to be proud of, they've worked two years without a contract, making 15% less than suburban teachers. Mr. Mayor, our city has a record $3 billion surplus, so isn't it time our teachers were paid fairly? New York's teachers deserve a fair contract. They earn it every day. The threat is real, and it sounds like this. Warning, inbound attack. Your computer system is about to be shut down unless you pay ransom. Tomorrow, cyber extortion. Why it's happening and what you need to know. Eye on America on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Experience you can trust. According to government health experts, as many as one in five American adults can expect to come down with a case of shingles sometimes in life. The virus can cause debilitating pain, and it's awfully tough to treat, and the pain can last for months. But tonight, there's new hope for shingle sufferers, as we hear from our CBS News medical correspondent, Elizabeth Caledon. If you've ever had shingles or know someone who has, you know it's about one thing, pain. This virus is a dormant version of the chicken pox that can get reactivated as you get older. It strikes a million Americans every year and causes a rash that can be excruciating. If you have shingles over the eye, a breeze blowing on your forehead can be very, very painful. That's why doctors like Michael Oxman have been testing a vaccine to prevent shingles, and tonight there are promising results. In a trial involving more than 38,000 people over five years, the number of cases was cut by 51%, and in people who did get it, symptoms were much less severe. And the long-term persisting nerve pain, which is the most troublesome and common severe complication of shingles, was reduced by two-thirds. That means a lot of older folks like Robert Williams and his wife Nancy will be spared great discomfort. 
In fact, the 96-year-old Williams, a retired doctor, participated in the study because he saw many patients suffer over the years. One even committed suicide because of shingles pain. I knew the severity of the disease when the pain lasts a long time. The shingles vaccine is a more potent version of the chickenpox vaccine currently being given to children. Now it will be up to the FDA to decide if this shot is safe and effective enough to hit the market. The vaccine was tested only in people over 60, so it's not clear if it will work as well in a younger population. The hope is it will because everyone who's had chickenpox is at risk of getting shingles, and that is most adults in the United States, John. Including you and me. Where do we sign up for this? Uh, well, it's not on the market yet, but we'll be first in line. All right, Elizabeth Kaladin, thanks very much. They met at a church in England on June 1st, 1925, so today... Florence and Percy Arrowsmith marked their 80th anniversary, according to Guinness, a world record. For 100-year-old Florence, the secret to a happy marriage is never going to bed at night without making up after an argument. For 105-year-old Percy, the secret can be summed up in just two words. Yes, dear. Still to come, these kids are learning a foreign language, but it isn't French or Spanish, it's Chinese. We'll tell you why next. Sadly, arthritis pain can make people say goodbye to the little things they love, but not people who use Aleve, whose doctors have told them the good news about the strength and safety of Aleve, the good news that only two Aleve can stop arthritis pain all day. That would take eight Tylenol. Take back what arthritis pain took away. Ask your doctor about the good news. Ask your doctor about Aleve. Try Aleve sinus and headache for 12 hours of relief from sinus pressure and pain with just one pill. No, blacked out. Ooh, you sound strong. Please? No. Just for me. Okay. The answer's always no. Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, anytime. Should have worked at Capital One. What's in your wallet? So long, ordinary toothbrush. Oral-B is created the Professional Care 8000. It pulsates and oscillates to loosen plaque and sweep it away. Teeth get twice as clean and your whole mouth gets healthier. Why use anything else? The Oral-B Professional Care 8000. I know plenty about chronic dry eye. My doctor explained that it's a condition where my eyes don't make enough tears. He gave me a prescription for Restasis. Restasis helps increase your natural ability to produce tears, which may be suppressed by inflammation due to chronic dry eye. It should not be used by patients with active eye infections and has not been studied in patients with a history of herpes viral infections of the eye. The most common side effect is a burning sensation. One drop twice a day, every day, helps me make more of my own tears. Thanks, Restasis. I would have problems with heartburn lots of times, like when I go out to dinner. Millions of frequent heartburn sufferers like Jackie are taking heart, thanks to the amazing relief of Prilosec OTC. I take the one pill in the morning, and the rest of the day I don't have to worry about heartburn. Prilosec OTC is the only OTC that can work for 24 hours with one pill a day. That's because it directly shuts down lots of acid-producing pumps in your stomach. One pill a day, 24 hours, zero heartburn. It's great with the Prilosec OTC. I love it. Tomorrow, have you been offered a luxury vacation by Saks? Is it really a scam? If you've ever been tempted by these, you won't want to miss our eye-opening expose on The Early Show. We close tonight with a look into the future and how more American parents are hoping to prepare their children for it. Richard Schlesinger reports foreign language education is turning away from Europe and toward the rising economic giant of Asia. What could possibly pack this school on a Sunday afternoon in spring in Tony Greenwich, Connecticut? Out of the mouths of babes comes the answer. These kids are starting early, learning what many people believe will be the language of international commerce when they get older. Chinese. E? Christopher Dunn is four uh, years old then can already count to ten. Do it backwards. Three. 
<laughs> Christopher's seven-year-old brother, Alex. <laughs> and his ten-year-old twin sisters, Mary Carolyn and Madeline, are all studying Chinese because their parents, Ray and Callie, believe a nation of one billion people is bound to affect the kids' lives. The way the world is developing, China's becoming so much more important. What else can you say? Um, grape. Well, how do you say grape? Pu chow. There are close to 200 students in this school, including children adopted from China. And there's already a waiting list for next year when Christopher will be back. I don't really know hard words. Yeah, maybe next year you'll learn hard words. When I'm in my brother's class or my sister's class. His older sisters are already reading and writing Chinese. In the past, these kids might have been urged to learn French or Spanish, but that was when the U.S. was focused on Europe and China was in the economic dark ages. It's not anymore. What many carry occurs in English? The Chinese have been teaching English for years in public schools, so Christopher Dunn's generation has to catch up. You speak better Chinese than I do. You know that? I know a lot of words. Yeah. And by the time he's an adult, the U.S. and China still might not be on the same page, but at least they could be speaking the same language. Richard Schlesinger, CBS News, Greenwich, Connecticut. And that's the CBS Evening News for this Wednesday. Vicki Mabry now with a preview of tonight's edition of 60 Minutes. It's one of the most painful wounds of war, and few soldiers want to talk about it. But this one will. 60 Minutes Wednesday. That's coming up at 8, 7 Central. For Bob Schieffer, I'm John Roberts in New York. Thanks for choosing CBS News. Have a good night. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart. Bringing your community jobs, low prices, and support for neighborhood programs. This is CBS. Lindsay Lowen's terrifying car crash caught on tape. Paris Hilton's billion dollar prenup and a high wire stunt ends in tragedy. Seconds away. How long does it take to get hooked on the newest CSI? About a New York Minute tonight. We have a serial dumping bodies all over the city. See how it all began with the first episode. Don't do it! CSI New York, CBS Tonight. Then. Caution for wine lovers. Tonight at 11, CBS 2 uncorks a new trend in wines that could take you by surprise. See why some are sounding the alarm and what you need to know about extreme wines. Now, Jim Rosenpeel joins Roz Abrams on CBS 2 News at 11 tonight. When we're choosing government, I think we ought to look at the record of the candidates. You know what, Mr. Schundler? We did. We got the spending down. No, you didn't. Under you, spending in Jersey City went up $84 million. We got the property taxes down. Wrong again. The average property tax bill went up $306. Folks, if you want property tax reduction, then go with someone who's actually proven it. Tax bills increased 18%, and your own campaign literature admitted it. Look at our record. No wonder your campaign's been described as negative and shallow. Technology that makes watching sports a lot of fun Thursday morning, starting at 5. Right now, on the Insider and Entertainment Tonight. Lindsay Lowen's terrifying car crash caught on tape. Get ready to be an insider. Lindsay Lowen's paparazzi disaster, sideswiped by a shutterbug. The chase that led to this. Now, an explosive insider investigation. We penetrate the ruthless, the dangerous, and sometimes desperate world of the men who'll do anything for a photo. I predict somebody's going to get killed. Then on E.T., is Brittany having a boy or a girl? Plus, did a big-time star buy Brad and Jennifer's mansion and Brad and Angelina's steamy dance? It's that, that hot, drunken, wild, sexy night with the strangers. Hollywood totally undressed. Playboy celebrity secret exposed. There's a big celebrity who's about to pose for Playboy. Who is it? Inside the wild world of celebrity centerfold. The full body lift that will leave your jaw on the floor.
I saw a Sharpe, a human Sharpe. She lost 285 pounds, but was still imprisoned by walls of fat. Definitely the most extreme that I've ever seen. Can surgery help her escape this suit of skin? And danger on the high wire. A horrifying moment caught on film. A life spent on the edge ends in a tragic fall. The Entertainment Hour starts right now. Hi again, everybody. I'm Pat O'Brien. Welcome to The Insider. You hear that roar? That's the loud buzz over today's top story. Let's get straight to it with our Ananda Lewis. Hey, Pat. The Insider broke the story about Lindsay Lohan's latest run-in with the paparazzi, a chase that could have ended in disaster. Now we uncover the video that shows how the star has become a target and how some photographers will stop at nothing to get at her. In tonight's backstory, Lindsay Lohan, the latest victim of a paparazzi out of control. The actress dissolved into tears after a paparazzi car crash. With the driver's side door of her new black Mercedes in shreds, Lindsay is in and out of the car, frantically pacing up and down the street. As the crowd begins to gather, Lohan inspects the damage to her car. Back inside, Lindsay scrunches down in the driver's seat to hide from prying eyes. Lindsay was clearly shaken by their ordeal. She got on her cell phone, and the cops came immediately to her rescue. Police arrested the photographer and booked him on suspicion of assault with a deadly weapon. There was enough evidence, they believed, to show that there, this was more intentional than it was accidental. In fact, just last month, insider cameras caught the star racing off in her white BMW, the shutterbugs crossing traffic, endangering lives just to get their shot. It's an industry where time literally means money, where shutterbugs race against the clock to get the good. All right, so you've already seen that there is no limit to how fast the paparazzi will go to catch a celebrity on land. But there's no limit even when it comes to the sky. If they can't get them from the ground, photographers will stalk celebrities from the air, hoping for their big bus money shot. Nothing is off limits. They're cheap prostitutes as far as I and other people are concerned in this industry. Celebrity publicist Ken Sunshine, who represents Leonardo DiCaprio, Justin Timberlake, and dozens of other A-listers, lives in fear that one day the paparazzi will finally go too far. I predict, and I just imagine how I feel, that somebody's going to get killed. Ooh, that's scary. As for the photographer involved in this latest incident, he was released on bail and is due in court in about three weeks. Well, the dish is fresh. We serve it up hot. Translation, time to open up the pages of page six. Paris pops the proposal. Now page six is breaking down what could be a billion-dollar prenup. Paris and Paris should and I expect will have a prenup. It will protect their assets and their family's name. So who has more to lose? Let's crunch the numbers. Well, Miss Hilton has earned over $32.5 million in the last five years. And let's not forget, Paris is in line to inherit a chunk of the $2 billion Hilton Hotel Empire. Add it all up and Miss Paris is worth about 114 million big ones. Now on to Mr. Paris. The 27-year-old bleach blonde is heir to his family's nearly $8 billion Greek shipping fortune. Even so, he asked the Hilton parents for their blessing. I've never seen Paris this happy. But what if the marriage goes south? Take a lesson from Marla Maples. She learned the hard way. Her prenup with Donald Trump landed her a measly $2.5 million. And what about the ominous cheating clause? Certain celebrities have opted to have such an infidelity clause in their prenup, presumably because one or both of them have had a history of straying from the relationship. For now, Paris and Paris called this $10 million sprawling Beverly Hills estate home sweet home. The secluded Spanish villa featured in the latest issue of Celebrity Living boasts a whopping 11,000 square feet with stunning city views. It came fully furnished, but does it have a nursery? There's no nursery per se, but there's plenty of options when this couple decides to start a family. Now, a TV star's life and death health crisis. Six weeks after undergoing a kidney transplant, George Lopez is telling the insider how he's doing. Then before you know it, you know, you, you're too far gone. Buried alive and trying to dig himself out. That's how George Lopez described his debilitating kidney deterioration. But now, just over a month later, he's back at full speed. I feel fantastic. I, I feel great for the first time. Really, for the first time in my life, I'm non-toxic, so... Amazingly, it was his wife, Anne, who selflessly donated a kidney to save George's life. I honor her every day. 
a terrifying ordeal. Imagine explaining to your child why both mom and dad had to undergo a serious operation. We told her literally about two days before we went in and, and, uh, and we did it in a gentle way. It's, full, it's pretty tough, both parents, you know, going in the night. But George hasn't had time to slow down. Starring in The Adventures of Shark Boy and Lava Girl in 3D, out in theaters June 10th, taking on not one, but four roles. Just stand back. But I play four parts, so... I mean, that, leave it to a Latino guy to hire another Latino guy and make him do four things, man. Looking good. Even when George was at his worst, he said he never considered quitting his show. Tomorrow on The Insider, erotic, provocative. Enrique Iglesias like you've never seen him before. His new mystery model, The Dirty Dancing, a lip lock caught on tape. Plus, inside his private life and his relationship with Anna Kornikova revealed. It is very difficult. It's difficult to keep it private. And the question that led to this stunning response. It still shocks me. Again, it shocks me. Tomorrow on The Insider. The entertainment hour is just getting started. Let's see what's ahead on E.T. Well, Pat, is it a boy or is it a girl? E.T. has baby news from Britney Spears and...